In this lecture, we're gonna be learning how to paint environments or landscape designs from our own imagination. So the first step is sketching out your designs or creating thumbnails. So right here I have a template for a bunch of thumbnails that we're gonna do. And if you want, you can follow along with me. Um, I'll have my thumbnail and sketch ready for you in the next lecture where we'll actually start painting it in. So if you want, you can start from that point or you can create thumbnails along with me or you can just create your your own composition all on your own and create your own environment design and apply the things that I'm gonna teach you throughout the next few lectures. So let's go ahead and get started. So when we're creating thumbnails, <clears throat> we usually wanna start off with some sort of a template like this. So what I have is I have a gray background and then I have a layer here that is just basically a white frame making all of these rectangular boxes. Now you can make the size of your boxes whatever you want or you can make them squares or up and down or side to side like I have here. It's really up to you. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna be painting in grayscale, just keep things nice and simple and to work out the composition and we'll worry about color later. So we basically wanna use three to four different colors of gray or values of gray. We just wanna grab a mid-tone, maybe uh, somewhere between the mid-tone and the black and then we can also probably use a black and then somewhere between the white and the mid-tone and then also white. So about four to five, I guess. So let's go ahead and get started. So. Typically, you want your foreground to either be light or dark, and then based off of that, then your background and anything going back further is going to be the opposite. So if your foreground is black, then you want your background to be a really light gray or possibly even a white. Or if your foreground is light, so such as a light gray or maybe even white, then you want your background to get a lot darker. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to start by painting in a light background. So I'm going to put my gray up here. And then using my brush tool, I'm gonna to add a new layer so I'm painting between my background gray and my frames. Let's grab a brush. I'm gonna use something like this watercolor brush or maybe I'll actually use this textured paint brush. All right, and now I can go ahead and start painting. <clears throat> Whoops. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in my background, my sky, with this lighter gray. Like that. And if you want, you can go ahead and just create multiple layers for this. You don't have to get that complicated if you don't want to, but you can if you'd like. And then you can just go ahead and merge them once you're done with this thumbnail so that you don't get all confused. You don't need all those layers in there for all of your thumbnails, but when you're doing individual thumbnails, you can create a bunch of layers and then you can just go ahead and merge those together. And just paint some simple clouds in there with a little bit of a lighter gray. And maybe I'll even put a sun in there. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and paint kind of a round circle right there. I'm gonna grab my white and then paint a circle like that to indicate the sun. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next layer. So I'm gonna add a new layer. And on this layer, I'm gonna go ahead and start painting <clears throat> some sort of background. So maybe a mountain range or something like that. Maybe it'll be some sort of mountain range with some buildings on it or something like that. And these are just supposed to be really quick and very sketchy. They don't have to get super detailed or anything. You're mostly trying to block out those shapes and those values, the size and the placement. That's what doing thumbnails for compositions is all about. Now one important part about doing thumbnails and doing concept sketches and things of that nature is you wanna make sure that you have some reference while you're doing it. Um, this reference can be other people's artwork, this reference can be real life photographs, whatever you want, but some reference is gonna help you kinda of get the ideas flowing. Now you don't wanna copy anybody else's ideas, but it might help you with color schemes, um, it might help you with the values, it might help you with the atmosphere, shapes, stuff like that. So make sure that you're always looking at some reference and using some other artwork as inspiration. Right now I have some artwork off screen that I'm looking at <clears throat> every now and then just to kind of give me some ideas. I can't show it because a lot of it is copywritten. And again, 
it's really important to understand that you're not copying this. You're not copying other people's ideas and stuff. You're just using it for inspiration. But that's why I can't show you what I'm using off screen. All right, great. Let's go ahead and add a new layer. I'm gonna drop the value down, so maybe more like a mid-tone. You can always use your eraser to reshape things. Maybe we have some sort of runes going on here. Alright, great. Let's go ahead and add another layer, and then I'm going to go ahead and darken this down. All right, so that's looking pretty good, but you can kind of see that there's not much of a composition going on here. It's just kind of a bunch of mountain ranges and stuff. And so kind of like I showed you earlier in the course, we can move these layers around and change things, change some of the shapes. Um, so let's try doing something like that. So I'm gonna come back down to this layer. I'm gonna reselect this gray and maybe I'll make this kind of more of a big mountain like this. Maybe I'll give it a little bit more of an interesting shape. Maybe I'll add some little things kind of hanging from this old structure. And right here you can see that we have these two corners that are touching each other right there and that's not very good so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go in there with an eraser and just erase some of that out because we don't want those tangent lines and maybe it would look interesting if we added a waterfall on here so i'm going to go ahead and grab this lighter gray back here and using my paintbrush i can just paint in a waterfall coming from the top of there. Okay. And then we can go ahead and bring a brush size up and we could paint in kind of some mist down there. So don't push too hard because you want this to be kind of transparent.
All right, great, that looks pretty good. Okay, so there's one example. Um, we could even do things like, let's just kind of reshape some of these lines in our foreground so they're pointing. So you can see that this line right here is pointing up towards our basically focal point in this picture, which is the waterfall. So let's see if we can get some more kind of pointing at that angle by erasing them. And then we could switch over to a brush, select this color. Maybe just add in a few more jagged rocks are kind of pointing up there at that. Maybe we have some more of a structure here that's kind of falling apart in our foreground. All right, great, that looks pretty good. So there's one example of creating a value thumbnail. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and paint in the rest of these thumbnail frames and I'm gonna time, la time lapse it so you don't have to watch me do all of them in real time. But stick around and just kind of watch what I do. Um, sometimes it's a little hard to explain and create really good art at the same time. So sometimes you just I just have to work on it and you just have to watch me do it. But that should give you a pretty good explanation. I'm just going to be basically applying the same thing to all the rest of these thumbnails. So I'll see you guys when I'm done.
All right, I think that's enough thumbnails. So you could go ahead and finish filling up this entire page if you wanted to, or you can just stop there. And like I said, I'll have my sketch and thumbnail ready for you in the next lecture. But I think that's enough for now. I already decided which one I want to go with. I think I'm gonna, well actually I'm still trying to decide between two of them. I'm trying to decide between this one right here and this one up here. So I'll figure that out before the next lecture. But yeah, that's basically how you create value thumbnails. Um, and just remember that you can use clipping layer masks because you'll see here, for example, on these buildings on the street. What I did is I just, I painted out the shape that I wanted and then I used some different values to kind of paint in from lighter to darker and then I smudged those together. But I used a clipping layer mask so all of that detail stayed within the shape of my buildings. All right, that brings us to the end of this lecture. So I'll see you guys in the next one.